Good evening. We're here in Russellville, Alabama. It's day 16 of Pavlov Across America 2011. We rode here today from uh, somewhere in Tennessee. Um, we crossed the state line early in our ride today uh, into Alabama and uh, just another beautiful state. It's uh, the second time Pavlov Across America is here in Alabama. In 2009, of course, we crossed through the southern tier of the state um, uh, through through Mobile, through the, the Gulf region there, and it was just incredibly beautiful, and I believe we had the wind at our backs most of the time, although that may just be a fantastical memory of mine. Um, of course, our evening hours uh, are when we dedicate um, to a child who, who has lost their battle with cancer. While we were riding today, I, uh, we were flying around a curve through uh, an area that had a few houses in it, and I uh, noticed a man carrying his child out from the front door uh, to their car. Presumably they were going to church because it was Sunday morning around 9 a.m. And I noticed a car in the driveway that had um, a, a decal on the passenger door for a hospice service. and. Uh, that was moving for me because um, people who do work in the hospice um, uh, uh, field are very special people. It's a very special field. It is, uh, I think, in ancient cultures, people who helped people to be born or to die were very special people, and I think that they still are. Um, when we were walking to dinner across the street from our hotel, I noticed in the uh, small office building um, next to our hotel, there's a hospice. Um, it's, I think it's called the Alabama Hospice uh, Organization. Their office is right next door to here. So this, uh, this, this uh, topic of passing away, passing on, um, how we do it, who helps us do it has been on my mind a lot lately. Um, I don't know why these two things have popped up in my presence today, but they have, and I am a believer in uh, in the simple idea that things come into our consciousness or into our presence for a reason. Uh, tonight, we're dedicating uh, our resting hours to a young a young man named Jake Aldrich. Who, um, who was diagnosed with cancer and he was four, who uh, had a whole, um, whole sort of uh, episode of cancer treatment and then was cancer free and then uh, had a, a recurrence, had several recurrences. Uh, and of course, like my son Pablo, he, um, and his family met the uh, hospice team at the end of his life because that's how these things go. Um, we um, honored Jake's life and his mother Jennifer wrote an incredible um, story of his life uh, for me to read to learn about him and I can tell you that he sounds like he was very similar to my son Pablo, very similar to many young boys. He was into soccer, he was into running back and forth on the field. Um, even when the cancer returned to his lungs for the third time, he was still playing soccer, he was still running back and forth on the field. And uh, that is very much... Uh, what we went through with our son Pablo. Um, I don't know what it is because I was never able to ask Pablo and I wasn't able to ask Jake. I would love to know when a little boy or a little girl uh, has a cancer recurrence. Do they know? Do they know? Do they know this thing is inside them and they're just going to keep running anyway because they know that their whole purpose in life is to just keep running and keep messing around and keep playing. Um, 
some point I will be lucky enough to meet a child and, and with the permission of their parents uh, to, to talk to them about this because I, I, I would like to know. But I do know that kids with cancer um, are incredible people. They, they absolutely stand out in any room they're in. They absolutely have a glow about them. And they absolutely, uh, when they smile, it is like the most valuable, precious thing that I've ever seen in my life. Um, things that most of us take for granted um, every day. Um, and then to see a child with cancer smile, you know, that child, that child's parents are not taking that smile for granted. It's a, it's a, it's a very powerful thing. Um, Jake's story was like the story of many, of many kids, um, which is that he was diagnosed with cancer. He uh, was very progressed. He got treatment and, and he went back to his life. And then unfortunately his cancer came back and um, when his cancer came back and he was on treatment, he spent long days playing with Legos and his, um, his mom, Jennifer, wrote that his fingers moved very quickly and uh, sounds amazing. He sounds like an amazing dude. Um, at some point in 2009, uh, he was in the hospital for, for a procedure and they were inpatient for 35 days. Um, that is about 50% longer than we're, all, we're doing um, this year on the road. That's a long time. Um, at some point, um, Jennifer and her husband leaned down to do their family hug with Jake. I can, I can picture this. And he said they were having a very hard time, his parents, and they were crying, and they, they didn't know what their options were. And they leaned down to do their family hug, and he said to them, don't cry, I will be okay. And um, he was seven years old. And uh, that, that just to me is an incredible thing uh, to hear even, even um, as I read on this paper uh, two and a half years later what Jake said. I can only imagine how it felt for his parents to hear that. I, uh, for the past hour, have felt deeply um, emotionally raw and I haven't figured out why that is quite yet. Um, certainly none of these dedications are without their emotional um, um, challenges for me. Even the kids who are off treatment um, or the kids who are currently on treatment, it's just, it's, it's, this is not, um, this is not fun stuff. And uh, when I figure out what, what's got me by the heart, I'll let you know. But for, for now, I'm gonna tell you that we honor Jake Aldrich and his mom, Jennifer, and their whole family. Uh, we are in Russellville, Alabama. Uh, it's raining outside. Um, the NFL games are on, and all the riders, I think, are in their rooms watching uh, their games. We just had a, a dinner here, and, um, and we are honoring Jake. The tough thing for parents and siblings who've lost children and brothers and sisters is that life goes on. The rain still comes down. And uh, Jake is still gone. And Pablo is still gone. And what we can do is we can stand up in this world and we can say we're going to do something like Pablo across America and then we can actually do it. And so uh, I'm really enjoying um, standing up and doing what I said I would do, along with uh, 16 or 17 other riders and our incredible crew out here. It's a real honor. Uh, we are touching people's hearts. Uh, people are touching our hearts by sending us their, their family stories. So we thank you for tuning in. We thank you for caring. And we'll see you in the morning. Good night.